The Dialectics of Secularization is a notable dialogue between Habermas and Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI, addressing the relationship between faith and reason in contemporary secular societies. In this work, the two thinkers engage in a respectful yet critical discussion about the role of religion and secularism in the modern world, emphasizing their differing but complementary perspectives. The dialogue provides insight into the challenges of reconciling religious belief with the secular foundations of democratic governance. Habermas, as a proponent of secular rationalism, acknowledges the importance of religion in shaping moral values and collective identity, but insists on the primacy of secular reason in public discourse. He argues that in a democratic society, the state must remain neutral, neither endorsing nor dismissing religious convictions. Instead, it must ensure that religious and secular citizens alike engage in rational dialogue, translating religious language into terms accessible to all. For Habermas, secularization represents a necessary process that enables individuals to operate within pluralistic societies, where diverse worldviews coexist and dialogue occurs through the medium of reason. Ratzinger, conversely, argues that secular reason alone is insufficient to address the moral and existential questions that confront humanity. He contends that faith and religion offer essential insights into the nature of human dignity, ethical responsibility, and justice insights that reason alone cannot fully grasp. For Ratzinger, modernity's over-reliance on rationalism risks eroding the foundational moral structures provided by religious traditions which have historically guided human behavior. He stresses that, without the moral framework supplied by faith, secular societies may fall into ethical relativism and nihilism. The core of their exchange centers around the tension between the secular state's need to accommodate religious pluralism and the role of religion in maintaining social cohesion. Habermas suggests that secular societies can benefit from the semantic potential of religious traditions, drawing on religious values, without imposing them as the foundation of law or policy. He calls for what he terms a post-secular society, where religious and secular citizens both contribute to public deliberation recognizing the moral insights of religious traditions, why for maintaining the primacy of secular constitutional law. Ratsanjay, while agreeing that the state must remain secular, warns against the dangers of radical secularism, which seeks to exclude religion from the public sphere entirely. He argues that such exclusion leads to a moral void, where human rights and ethical norms become unmoored from their deeper metaphysical foundations. For Ratzinger, the weakening of religious influence in public life threatens to undermine the very values of human dignity and justice that secular democracies strive to uphold. One key point of agreement between the two is the recognition that neither religion nor secular reason, can fully claim a monopoly on truth in the public sphere. Habermas concedes that secular reason must remain open to the contributions of religious thought, particularly in areas of moral discourse. Ratzinger, in turn, acknowledges that faith must engage with reason and cannot retreat into dogmatism or fundamentalism. Both thinkers advocate for a reciprocal relationship between faith and reason, where each informs the other, 
without overstepping its boundaries. In discussing the role of religion in politics, Habermas draws attention to the, the importance of the separation between church and state. He affirms that religious beliefs must not directly influence state policies, but he recognizes that the ethical perspectives religion offers can enrich public debate. Habermas calls for mutual respect and understanding between religious and secular citizens, where religious language is translated into universally accessible terms to contribute to democratic deliberation. Ratzinger, on the other hand, warns against the risks of an overly secular state that disregards the moral and ethical insights rooted in religious tradition. He argues that the state should not be hostile to religion, but should create a space where religious voices are heard and respected. Ratzinger is concerned that modernity's emphasis on individual autonomy and relativism could lead to the degradation of moral values, weakening the bonds that hold society together. Both thinkers also address the concept of human dignity, with Ratzinger grounding it in the theological notion of humanity being created in the image of God. While Habermas argues that a secular humanistic understanding of dignity, based on the equality and autonomy of individuals, they agree that human dignity is a core value that both religious and secular citizens can uphold, even if they arrive at this conclusion through different paths. Another significant theme is the challenge posed by the increasing pluralism of modern societies. Habermas and Ratzinger both recognize that the coexistence of multiple worldviews, religious, secular, and otherwise, requires careful negotiation in the public sphere. Habermas advocates for a process of translation, where religious arguments are re-articulated in ways that can be understood by people of different faiths or none. This, he believes, preserves the integrity of democratic discourse, while allowing religious insights to inform public debate. Ratzinger while supportive of pluralism, warns against the relativism that often accompanies it. He is concerned that, in the absence of shared moral foundations, societies may struggle to find common ground on critical ethical issues. For Ratzinger, the recognition of objective moral truths, many of which are grounded in religious teachings, is essential for maintaining social order and justice.